Hey, Nathan here helping you become a better jungler. Today we have a review request from a player over on the European West server, Diamond3, and this is a Hecarim game he has submitted for review. Now there's quickly something I want to touch on here, I've never really touched on this before, but his IGN is shameful rank, and I want people to be careful with the IGNs they select. I know sometimes it can be like funny and like banter, uh, maybe he literally is disappointed in his rank. I mean, Diamond 3 is not too bad, but it sounds like he has good expectations for himself, but it, the human mind's very good at your self-talk. Your self-talk can really start to actually have effect on you. Like he could be really shameful of his rank versus, you know, being really excited. It's like, this is the journey. Like, yes, I'm a Diamond 3, right, Diamond 3 player right now. I don't want to always be a Diamond 3. I feel like I have potential to be much better, but there's no shame in it, you know? And again, it's like we, we're using the term, terminology shameful rank. There was a player, a player who actually became a pro player in OS who his name used to be Hardstuck. Um, ADC or something like that and we told him it's like this is it's really negative self-talk again it could be like a funny thing it's like you know telling the world you're hard stuck but again your self-talk's really really important and it even comes down to your IGN as much as you might not think it does it really does especially over time because at the end of the day you're logging in every game and your little IGN shameful rank and you're typing to people it's like hey I'm the guy with the shameful rank you know diamond three so um, you know, change it if you want. This is just my advice on that. Be careful of the terminology you're using to describe your level of play or even yourself. All right, so jumping into these OPGG here, doing a quick review. I've taken some notes on it here, but um, in the preseason here, we've got an okay amount of games here. If we look at um, ranked here, he has played pretty decent amount in the last he played a lot five days ago in the last week or so looks like he's actually testing out echo he has a 30 percent win rate and graves because last season he um was an elise main with a really good amount of games 300 or so with a 57 percent win rate Leasing Grave Silas. So obviously this is a Hecarim review. Looking at your OPGG, you had 21 games last season, and this season you have nine. So we have roughly about 30 or so games. So I'm gonna have zero expectation for you to have champion mastery um, on Hecarim, which is fine. You know we can be learning the champion again. That's why you're submitting review. See what you know, even potentially just jungle fundamentals, win cons. So you played a decent amount. Um, I'm not gonna talk much about Hecarim builds because I think there's a lot of options to go. And I need to really test some things out. I'll be making some videos next week about my thoughts on Hecarim builds. So I won't touch on that here. Um, looking at your ranks here. So you finished last season Diamond 2. Obviously, you've dropped a bit because you've been testing Echo. Again, that's completely fine. But, you know, you were Master in Season 9. And obviously, we've gone a bit backwards here. So this is, I think, I mean, if you want to potentially get back to Master or something, I think we need to really do some, you know, reflection about... Um, potentially our approach to rank or I mean again your goal I would assume every time people submit these review requests I'm usually assuming that you, you're a pretty motivated player so you know like I'm not going to say it's again it's like your diamond three diamond two it's like you know you know like what are you doing your master like you suck now it's like you know it's fine like maybe you just didn't you just had a different year you may be busy with something else but again the fact that you submit this review request I feel like that we should really start to be pushing for um master at least again next season so i really want to see that from you um, maybe even set a goal of grandmaster i always like to shoot a bit higher so even if we miss we're still at the end of the day master tr rather than diamond three so um let's take a look at um sort of just a summary here so yeah finished dot diamond two last season was master 55 lp in season nine let's get back there He's in the least main, 70% win rate across 10 games this season and preseason so far. So obviously very proficient on Elise. Hecarim is a lot different play style to Elise. You're obviously not as strong in the early game. You can't really set up dives as well. And there is 31 total Hecarim games he has across preseason and season 10. So no expectation of champion master again. When I say that, I'm always expecting a Hecarim with zero, very little champion mastery to have very poor usage of ultimate and ease. You can always tell a a very new player or average player of Hecarim to a really good player simply by the way they, they move around utilizing their E and their patience on their ult or their ability to pull a trigger on their ult very quickly. So that's what I'll be looking out for in this review. All right, so this is the request. Um, Whitey thought he won or lost this specific game he submitted. 
I feel like he lost the game because I couldn't finish this game enough quickly. So the Kassin got the late game. He was already in a good state in the game and just destroyed us. Obviously, Kassin level 16 isn't ideal to verse, but doesn't mean you still can't beat it. I've definitely uh, won my fair share amount of games against Kassin level 16. Are there any specific moments of the game you want me to focus on? Thinking about if it was right to get those drakes at these moments because, for example, the first drake was 50-50. Let's take a look at the first drake then. Which lane did identify as win condition in the early game? Was focusing on the top lane because Camille has a good setup for ganks against a Yasuo. In the mid lane, I was like an AP mid against Cassidy. Not very well, plus my mid laner got perma pro uh, most of the game. And bot Ezreal Jhani is hardly killable. Alright, so let's take a look at what I think of the win condition here. So these are the comps here. This helps you visualize it a bit more. So it's against the Kha'Zix. Um, Kha'Zix matchup is yes and no for Hecarim. If Kha'Zix gets ahead early, because you not you take so long to really get tanky as Hecarim, you're really just a free kill for um, Kha'Zix. But you can do a lot of work in the early game against Kha'Zix, especially the fact that he's going Dark Harvest here. You have Conqueror with Ghost. You're pretty good into um, Kha'Zix in the early game. You can definitely dictate the pace of the game. Kimelon to Yasuo top. Definitely, I agree here. You have good setup here. And Orianna into a Cassidy. Um, Orianna should win that lane early. So I'm saying here, Orianna is likely to have priority early. We can utilize that to potentially get double crabs, contest Kha'Zix on crab. Um, even contest his second Raptors. That's the one I'm thinking. And um, so that's why I'm looking here. I contest the, his first crab. And there's even the double crab potential. And bot lanes, it looks like a Twisted Fate ADC with Misfortune support. Very odd bot lane against an Ezreal Jana. You said that Ezreal Jana you feel like is not that gankable, but I, I mean, they are. If I mean, if Ezreal uses his E, Jana doesn't have ult. If you get ult before them, like level six, you can kill these guys pretty easily. You know, especially with like, you can like, utilize gold card from Twisted Fate. I don't think it's un as unkillable as you think it is. Um, but I do think overall you've identified the right wing condition here. I would be definitely playing around Camille. Um, Camille can definitely get out of control, be a menace in the sideline. You just play around Camille. And it's more the fact as well of making sure Yas is useless because Yasuo losing top lane to Camille, he is finished. He's going to be pretty useless for the entire game. So, given that, since we're starting on red side here, as we can see here, I would be doing a simple blue, Gromp, Wolves, Raptors, Red, then look to pressure here. The great thing about this is I'm going to also presume that Kha'Zix, again, don't always presume, you're going to have to look at it in the game as well. The Kha'Zix starts red, which is great, because that means we're going to meet in top side. We're going to have the stronger top side here, because again, Oriana is going to be pushed in. So, I would be coming to go to this crab. Get the crab and even potentially look for a double crab because he will probably do this and then loop back. And if gank's not, if top's not gankable, then you can just do a crab here and then run just straight back and go for the double crab. Again, I want you to pressure the Kha'Zix early a bit. But again, if there's a gank opportunity top, let's go for top. All right, so before we get into the game, recommended runes. He takes last stand this game. I think there's, I mean, there's a lot of squishy champs this game. You know, the Kha'Zix, all that sort of stuff. Last stands for fights that you feel like are going to go for a bit of a long time. Again, going back to this, I sort of just want you to just one shot. One shot the Kha'Zix, Yasuo, Ezreal, Jana. Kuda guys is going to be much better for you. I prefer to take that, but the rest of your runes are fine. All right, so let's jump into the game now and take a look. So jumping into the game here... Hecarim here opts for the blue smite. So, let's think about this here. Um, again, ideally if we're playing towards top side, we're going to be taking red smite. But if we're t playing towards bot side, then blue smite's fine. Um, view red smite as a mini exhaust. It's going to be really good against Kha'Zix. I love red smite against, for helping me dual Kha'Zix. It can literally be the difference between killing him or not. And I'll take it as well against Yasuo. And it looks like you even said you identified. So we're on the same page, I think, about the wing con here. But blue smite here, don't think makes too much sense. Alright, so getting into the early game here. Let's look at your path in. It's sort of the same reason why I take red smite, why I think Conqueror... Um, I didn't talk about this in the rune section, but I, I'm actually also starting to feel like Conqueror, just like almost every game is Hecarim. It's just Synodar just so well on him. Sure, you can go Phase Rush. Yeah, all cool. You know, it's technically good against ranged squishy champs. 
But this game, it does, literally, Phase Rush is only useful for the bot lane, and that's that's just not enough to really warrant to take it. So, similar reason to go Red Smite, as well as the Conqueror. We're going to be against lots of melee champs. And, yeah, I mean, Hecarim, I mean, Kassadin, at the end of the day, he jumps in. You want to just be looking to one-shot him and exhaust him. Again, use a mini exhaust with the... Um, with the red smite. Okay, so it looks like he's placing the ward top side to defend it. Switches out to sweeper. Very stock standard stuff. I like it. And we're starting blue. Excellent. So let's just quickly look at Make sure he's weaving in his auto attacks correctly. Kiting the camp to the next camp. Good, good, good. Good. Efficiency. Perfect. Okay, I think we could have actually done an auto attack there first. Then Q for maximized damage. So you see how we auto... Okay. So yeah, I think, so what, ideally when you start Gromp, auto attack, Q, then auto attack. Again, we always want to make sure that we're always utilizing the auto attack reset. We already have two stacks of the Rampage, so it's all good. Alright, it's not necessary to pop that health potion there at all. You're actually very healthy, um, clearing with that bot leash. And you didn't no need for smart that as well. So you've pretty much wasted a potion. So the way that I like to... So obviously before people like to smite Gromp, you know, in season 10. But since Gromp heals you now, I really like to save my smite for red. Just in case people are trying to do some sort of cheesy thing. Like, I know Kha'Zix could do a red, blue Gromp and then easily invade you on red. That's actually a pretty potential uh, possibility here. Um, maybe not because, you know, Oriana has priority. It'll be pretty 50-50 on his part, but could be something there. But again, just save Smite for red, and we're a bit overkill here. And this potion could really make a difference. It might look like a really small thing, like Nathan, he still has one pot, it's all good. But it can really add up. Like, he's probably missed, like, 150 or so health of on less healthier because he's wasted that pot. All right, so just path in top here. Looking top, I love this looking top. Great. Looking top, looking top. Alright, so doing Raptors here looks like you want maybe want to go top straight away. And we are going top straight away. Excellent. Okay, so remember making this play, we know that Kazix Kazix is very rarely to do a three camp. Um he would be potentially here if he did three camp. Um, let's say Kha'Zix did, and we know he actually started red here as well. Red, blue, grump. Actually, I always need to check as well. Sometimes I forget um, with diamond reviews because about pinging where the enemy jungler started because it's sort of just my expectation. Let's just make sure that we know where Kha'Zix started here. Always need to check this every game. So Yasuo shows top, Yasuo shows top. Spot lane's not showing, bot lane's not showing. I'll check Jana's mana, Israel's mana. Great, and ping stop. Beautiful. Clean, clean. So we know Kha'Zix is 100% going to be topside here. I mean, you could definitely very comfortably make this play. Oh, we're skipping a little bit far here. All right, so Raptors, and then we're going to walk up here. And Yasuo sort of just accepts his death, tries to kill Camille, and that's a dead yes. Excellent. Oh, so we actually just sort of spoiled this. Can we see you died to Kha'Zix here? All right, let's figure out why we died to Kha'Zix here. Remember, coming back to the information there, we know he started red. We know his top side, and this is what I like to call it information advantage. You've made your play, you've done your move, you've killed top, great stuff. Now it's actually Kha'Zix's turn. Kha'Zix is like, okay, I know where Hecarim is. I'm just going to come and sit in this bush and wait for him to potentially come down to get this crab. I think you can get this crab, all good, but the way you walk here, we can't walk here like this. I mean, especially the fact that Actually, uh, this crab's actually just not yours at all, now that I think of it. Because Yasuo is just off the map right now, unless Camille record right now and TP back. So I'm actually completely happy to leave this crab. So what you're going to do here, Hecarim, is you're going to... I'll probably loop around here, get my Krugs very cautiously because I'm right here. Reset, in my mind, literally... I mean, okay, you, you don't have to give your red. Maybe you can tell for Ori. Actually, I'll just assist ping Ori. Just help, help me on red, help me on red. But you do really need to get bot crab. I'm actually fine with that. I'm actually not even going to worry about that at all. It looks like Orion is having a good time um, mid lane. So the best case scenario here is you walk up here, take the Krugs, reset. Whether he gets the red or not, I don't really care. What you're going to do here is you're going to go straight down here, take the, um, the bot crab, then his raptors will likely be up as well, I believe. Just be coming up. And you could take those raptors, do another full clear, um, and then look for potentially top. Not even full clear, maybe you could do raptors and then gank top again. That's, in my mind, best case scenario in this situation. 
But basically, I'm fine for Kha'Zix to get this crab. I've gotten first blood here. I don't need to risk it by going there. So, this is one of my soul two sins is, you know where the enemy jungler is, or the enemy mid lane is missing as well. You show on the map, give free information advantage, and then you walk into the jungle. Like, you're, you're, it's so risky to do, and I love that you get punished for this because this is such a common mistake I see from players. Um, not respecting the vision of Andrew. And again, we had the information. We knew Kha'Zix was topside. Whether he's here or not, we need to respect it. And you were punished for it. So that's a pretty big um, bit hit to the, your early game here. You're spam pinging red because you think Kha'Zix might be on this. And it looks like he's potentially just gone to double crab you. So if he's not here by now taking that, he's probably just gotten top crab. And there's Kha'Zix there. Going to bot crab makes sense. And Kassadin just tries to push this in. You chase him down here. Good, good, good. Great, we're actually getting a bot crab now. This is really good. So get the bot crab. Bot's fully pushed up. Top is heavy trading. I'll be looking at top here. See what's going on. Look at the wave, because I need to know right now if I'm looking to ditch my raptors or not. So Grom, Wolves, okay, it looks like Camille won that trade and he's pushed out. So we could probably just do a nice little relaxing full clear here. But definitely want a bit more map winners here. The fact that you're identifying top is your win condition, you need to be looking on that wave as much as you can. You need to know what's going on there. You need to know how to path around that. Thinking about a minute or so ahead, what are you going to do? Alright, so what's going on mid here? Looks like Orion is really controlling that wave. Again, I'm just looking at the minimap here. It's hard to tell exactly. And this is, again, the, the, just the disadvantage you have by not looking at lanes. Alright, so this is pretty much just a standard efficient path. Doing Krugs. Ooh, top wave. So top wave actually looks... It's actually pushing in right now. So my initial thought process is run straight top right now. Kill Yasuo again. You are looking there, but you have committed to bot sites. You did look, maybe. I, I'm curious to see if you actually thought that was an option. I mean, I guess you can come bot here. They were fighting a lot bot. Deny the dragon. I guess this is still fine. And obviously, your bot camps are going to be spawning. Your blue is going to be spawning soon. So, I think this is, I guess, fine. But you see, the problem is, and I can already tell why this becomes a 50-50 dragon. Because you're bot side, and in your mind, you're like, okay, well, I'm bot. Like, I might as well do dragon right now. This is where coin flipping and 50-50 comes in. Because right now, you're not, you're like, I'm too far away from top. It's out of the realm of possibility. So, I'm just going to force this dragon because I'm bot side anyway. So, it's a very big trap mindset. Um, all right. Kha'Zix is probably dead here. He just runs into that. Oh, what happens to your E? Okay, there's no reason to, to charge up your E there. You know, Kha'Zix, even if you E on team, he's just going to E away, trade E's. Imagine if you had E right now. E's a very big ability. You don't want to just use it willy-nilly like that. Alright, so Kassan and Rome's down here. Again, this is where I come back to the usage champion master. Usage of E and ult is everything on Hecarim. So you turn up your E. Again, same sort of situation there. Kassan is going to jump over the wall. Why are we in? So, commit to dragon. This is actually not so much a 50 50. I wouldn't say this is. I think this is actually a fine dragon core. Pop your next potion here. Kazix is E over the wall. Good smite. Uh, the reason I say that is Ori had full priority there and Kassadin was um, was pushed in. So I think that's fine. Again, you're much stronger than Kha'Zix in these situations right now. And Oriana has ult. So, yep. I think that's a good dragon core. Camille solo kills top. Great. We've got a pretty clear win condition here, I think. Bolins looks like they're doing fine as well. I just want you to kill top on repeat at this stage. So Blue Grunt Wolves. I mean, you're doing very well for farm right now. You definitely have a very good idea of efficient path in. And then moving up top here. Yeah, I mean, you guess you could maybe base. Um, you can't get... Um, looks like you're building Triforce, are you? Yeah. We can't get it now, so this is fine. This is fine. Rift Child's coming up. Kha'Zix shows bot. 
Uh, so Kazakh shows bot. I would be checking right now. Is there a red buff? Does he have blue buff? I mean, there's no way he has blue buff, so you come in here to take the blue. Very clean. Love this counter jungle in here, punishing Kazix for being bot side of the map. The great thing about this now for Kazix is Kazix can't even trade anything on the bot side of the map for this. So this is you're gonna be this is gonna essentially generate you a huge experience and lead advantage over Kazix. He did kill your TF, but this is all good. And you might say, okay, Nathan, why not do the rift instead? As champs like Hecarim, Eve, and stuff like that, this is more important than taking the Rift Heal. We can get hit Rift Heal after, maybe if you can, you know, kill top or something like that. Not right now, because Kha'Zix is going to be resetting and running straight top. You'll probably check Rift Herald. What you could potentially do is just sit in this bush, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think it's even an option right now. I don't know how much... I think you can get Triforce now. Maybe not. I think it's like 1,300. I'm actually really bad with the gold amounts right now on items for... Um, the way the flow of the game right now with the new items is something I need to think. But I, actually, I don't think you can get Triforce, so that's not an item spike right now you can get. Decides to take his walls as well. Okay, in my mind, again, Kha'Zix has reset after the bot play. He's probably here. Here. Looks like Twist of Fate's around here for a potential ult. So we can go here, and Kha'Zix shows up perfectly here. So hopefully you're tracking Kha'Zix there. Alright, so now we need to defend Camille. Kha'Zix is going straight top. He's just checked all his camps. Top, 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 top. Danger ping top. Danger ping top. Track in, track in, track in. Danger ping, danger ping. Alright, well luckily Camille doesn't die there, but we potentially, that was some mistiming on um, Kha'Zix. Again, not utilizing the information. Maybe you just didn't see Kha'Zix there. Alright, this is pretty good. Oof. All right. So, again, perfect example again. Lack of champion mastery, understanding. Hecarim, you need to be really patient against champions with jumps like Kha'Zix because the best case scenario, the way you play that, is he jumps over the wall and then you ult after them. But I wouldn't even ult after him here. I would have taken that chunk as a small win and then just force a Rift Herald. Kha'Zix will panic his 20% health. They'll come and try and contest. You still have ult. You'll clean up, get Rift Herald. Get your um, red Krugs reset. Come bot. Probably come here. Take his Raptors to contest again. Uh, Kha'Zix, make sure you're three levels ahead of him at this point. You would have probably won the game really nicely at that. Again, Kha'Zix is not a problem for you at all here. So this is really important. Utilizing, not knowing when to ult and when not to ult, and knowing that when you have a small win. Really important lesson as um, Hecarim. So Orana helps you get this. Probably do Crab after. All right, and the first question you need to ask now, where's Kha'Zix going outside at a base? Probably bot side to get his camps again. That's why I said potentially um, reset after the Rift Herald. Actually, I think I said do Red Krugs, then go back bot side. You probably missed the opportunity. So maybe not. Okay, so Kha'Zix is bot, as presumed. Pinging that. Again, I probably would have pinged bot a little bit earlier. Again, you know that he would be going bot. Think about the home guards as well, because when you die, you get home guards out of base. Looks like bot's going to die here. So you did danger ping it, maybe too late. Um, and then if bot dies, bot dies, but we potentially could have prevented that as well. Again, we can tell very easily right now where Kha'Zix is going, but you're just not pinging it. All right, this is excellent. Love this. Yasuo is low health. You don't have ult, but this should still be pretty clean. Playing towards your win condition, you're probably going to break the tower off this. So this is really, really good play. Understanding your win condition very well and how to play around it. How do you break it? Alright, so it looks like you're actually holding Rift Held. I like this, just to make sure you guarantee the tower. But you've actually 100% got the tower here. This is a pretty good, big wave. You probably could have just popped it. But I like that you're popping it two and a half plates. It's a very good rule to follow as well. Making sure that you're breaking towers with Rift Held, not just getting plates with it. Especially when there's still three minutes to go on the map. Alright, so Dragon's coming up. You've got the first Dragon. I think there's no reason to, to discount not setting up for Dragon Soul this game. So... Not doing Krugs here is a very good move for tempo. A lot of junglers might be like, oh, I've got to do, continue being efficient. And, I mean, again, you've already done really well this game. You've 98 CS by 11 minutes. There's no reason for us to do Krugs all out here. Reset, you need to be bot side get ready, getting ready for this dragon. So I like this a lot. And now Kassadin's really putting pressure on Oriana in this matchup, unfortunately. So we reset. Go straight bot side here. 
for the dragon. Two controls. Love the two control wards. Excellent. It's going to be great setup for you. And we got plated steel caps. Again, I think that's a really good buy against Kha'Zix, Yasuo, and I mean, they don't have, they actually have very little CC, so it makes no sense to go Merc Mercury Treads this game. Again, plated steel caps here is Ninja Tarbs. Not some action bot, but they just straight up win this. This is going to be a free dragon. Oh, what happens here? So you're hitting the tower, hitting the tower. Kha'Zix, okay, not much you can do about that. Again, don't really want to be ulting like that. Um, you know, Kha'Zix has stealth, he has jumps. It's going to be, you know, worst case scenario, he says you ult him in his 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 stealth. Because the fear does nothing, you know. And you just one-shot him there anyway. It's fine. But again, I can tell you already, your usage of ultimate is just lack of champion mastery. You don't understand how to use it against Kha'Zix. Needs some work. Right, so Kha'Zix is dead. You take Crab. Take Dragon. Alright, I probably would have just taken... Okay, no, you can't just take Dragon here first. Yeah, do the Crab's all good. Reason being, because Kha'Zix is pressure in mid. Alright, we just back off. Janna is a bit of a pain to play against. Just take the blue buff here. Yeah, you could give it to Ori. Nah, we could just take it. We're going to carry this game. We're 4-1. and one. I just want to show here the level difference here again. This is just from... Just showing again. You've got a pretty good understanding. Of efficient path in here. I mean, Kha'Zix says he's four and one, but you're so far, you're two levels ahead, and this is just showing as well. Kills, you have the same. He has more kill participation, but you're two levels ahead because I mean you're 50, 60 CS up, and a huge way that he gained that lead there was um, when Hecarim here went to take his top side and Kha'Zix showed bots. That was, he made Kha'Zix made some huge mistakes here, letting Hecarim just get this gain this huge lead. And I assume when he died bot, he also didn't do any of his camps because he has 57 CS, which is very very low for this time. The fact that this Kha'Zix wins this game is um, definitely had good fortune. Alright, so again, probably still can't do Dragon. You are sitting on 1300 gold. Probably not much we can do here. Okay, Ori's, Oriana's going to have a push here. I love the patience, just waiting. Good, good, good. You pop Ghost. Just to fade alts here. Kha'Zix is top. Great. Take the dragon. Looking to pressure Kha'Zix on the red. Don't even worry about this. The enemy bot lane's back again. There's no reason to make that play to win this game. We have 1800 gold. Our bot camps are up. Let's just again... Always Also be thinking here as well. Okay, you got your uh, Camilla ahead. I mean, TF and this Misfortune are doing pretty well. I mean, I'm just it's all just because of the, how weak Ezreal and Janna is as well in early lane. But think again about playing around Camilla on the side. She's going to be very, very oppressive soon. So given that, I would be resetting after Wolves here to spend our gold, 2,000 gold. Um... You, you don't, the worst case scenario right now is, I mean, right now, playing around top side, getting this second rift tower is the next objective. You've already gotten bot tower, you've already got top tower. So the next objective you need to be thinking in your mind is now top side. So you have 2,000 gold, spend your gold, reset, come straight out of base. Based on what's going on, you can maybe do red and then try and help Camille straight away. But I'll be telling Camille, hey, just wait for me to clear my top camps ideally. Then come pressure, pressure these camps, get the rift tower, use that to break this mid tower. So, I potentially have a pretty bad feeling about this, because what happens now, you're going to get stuck on the map, and now you're trying to invade with 2,000 gold weaker than you actually should be. 2,000 gold is a significant gold lead at 15 minutes on one person, and the fact that we're trying to fight right now with this in our inventory, uh, this is a salt to send. So, not resetting on the map, um, looking to go for a fight or something like that, or an objective. An objective is the enemy team's red blue buff as well. And here comes a fight, and we look at Cassidy behind us. We can tell how this is going as well. We're going to go here. So, we kill Yasuo, sure. But again, look at our team. You know, like. And this is going to lose. This is going to be severe consequences for this. We give 500 gold shutdown, we have 2600 gold on inventory. Again, that was partly because of the kill. Now it makes our mid lane a bit vulnerable here, but we're going to lose so much momentum. You're letting Cassidy just get so much CS right there. Cassidy will still be potentially stuck mid, or even if you tried to go to the side lane. Again, ideally if you based off the Wolves, 
you would be able to pressure them. Kassin wouldn't be able to get three, four ways worth of experience in a shutdown gold. So you let the enemy Kassin get back into the game here. Again, that fight was completely not necessary at all. That sort of stuff is game losing mistakes. The way that I review that for myself, oh, makes sense why I lost that game. There you go. End of review. Bam. But we'll obviously, we'll keep looking at it here because we're still in the game. Our bot lane's very, very strong. And Kassin gets that top tower. Potentially, we lose Rift Herald as well. And they kill, to, kill, uh, kill Camille again top. So again, these are just the consequences. You know, and he's, now Camille's tilted doing the FF votes. So you, so look at this, all the pressure on the map's gone. You should have Rift Herald tower, mid tower would have been broken by now. Alright, so we have full mid priority here. This is actually a good Rift Herald call. Good, good, good. And mid tower's actually broken, so we don't really need it. So right now, my mindset is, okay, so oh yeah, you're pinging Dragon, this is good. Dragon's the next objective. You have two control wards. Hmm. That's an interesting one. I don't view my ult as actually worth it there. You want to be fighting this dragon, cleaning up this fight, killing four people, and then taking Baron. Killing Janna there, the way the death timers works right now, in a way, this actually makes the enemy's life easier to decide whether to ditch this dragon or not. This is your third dragon. I'd rather you hold your ult right now to use it to fight dragon. Because I want you to fight Dragon, because right now is when your team is stronger than them. And then because of the way the timings work right now, you're going to be able to probably get Baron off that as well. I think that this should be a nice, clean um, victory here for you um, in terms of Dragon. So that's actually, in a way, a very low-impact kill. I talk about a bit in my content, the low-impact kills versus high-impact kills, but you're not going to have ult for the Dragon fight again, but even maybe the enemy team might just be decide to just give concede it now at this point, because they're like, oh, Janna's dead. So that's, that's something to think about. I want you to think about that. I mean, a kill is a kill at the end of the day, but just think about that next time, about, you know, objectives, holding your ult ready for the objective fight, especially when you're ahead. The enemy team will make a huge mistake. They'll just force, and then you just clean them up. Hecarim ult, Hecarim's very good at team fighting with his ult up. All right, so um, Camille dies. He sort of looks like he sacrifices himself for the dragon. That's Karzik's ult. You guys get your third dragon. Great. Dragon soul win condition. We have rocking and rolling. Wolves, raptors. Reset for Sterax. Yep, I mean, Sterax is, is traditionally always a good item. And Hecarim again. N not going to comment too much about Hecarim builds until I do a bit more testing myself. All right, Karzix just runs in to your mid lane. I mean, let's just think about Karzix's decision here. He's trying to get picks. Look at the control that uh, Hecarim's team has here. He should be running away with that ult. And instead, he just runs in and dies. Oh, oh sorry, TF ult counters Karzix pretty well. Pretty hard, actually. So that makes sense. He just ults him. He's actually just dead there. So there you go. We just got two kills. ADTF is very oppressive. And there's Baron. All right. So, first thing you're thinking right, right now, um, I have Rift Herald, use it in a side lane, let's pressure two lanes at least with Herald. So, reset here, yeah, spend your gold, reset with your team, cool, 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 Camille has actually just died bot. Alright, I love this, I love this out of base, straight, yeah, give TF the red, that's all good. Straight out of base here, I love the, the emphasis on mid priority. The way you're gonna, the fact that you still have mid tower up and you have Baron, get mid priority first, and then you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna control either side of the jungle here, Ideally, Camille comes out of base. You've already got some pressure going top. You start letting him push bot, push bot, push bot. You keep mid-priority while you wait for him to come back on the map. Then you're invading this, looking to get picks again. Because why I want you to control bot side for the next 3-4 minutes and utilize this Baron is because you're going to have the Dragon potential, which is Dragon Soul. There's nothing really more to gain top side. So that's the exact way that I'm thinking the way to close out this game here. So we're just waiting for Camille. Okay, so you know the way I'll use this Rift Herald right now? I know it's about to expire. Reset right now. With true reset, because there's no even reason for you to be on the map right now, actually. You need to wait for your Camille and Ori anyway. Reset, place your Rift Herald bot so it comes down bot, and you guys will put a lot of pressure with this Baron with this Rift Herald. It's literally useless Rift Herald in mid here. You don't even want to use Rift Herald after you've broken this, this tower here. Um, you don't want to be using Rift Herald in mid lane after this. This tower's... Yeah, sure, it's okay, 
but you want to be utilizing the rift child for side lanes because it gives you so many more options to get so many more objectives because what happens is i call it the magnet concept you place the rift child people start it starts coming down here everyone the enemy team's like oh no we got to come down we got to come down here Oh no, they're pushing mid, they're priority mid, they're priority mid. Oh no, but we gotta go bot. Oh, let's just run down through here. Bam, you catch them, you get an inhibitor. So the way that I, I think I rift yield is not about the objectives, it's baiting the enemy team into unfavorable positions, putting them in vulnerable positions in the um, in the jungle. Just like, just trying to catch them like a fly. Set up, it's like setting up a trap. Like I guess you could say it's like a rat trap or something like that, the Herald. So that was a huge waste of that second, second rift herald. Definitely could have pl placed a bot. So, Camille's getting gromp. Again, the way it ran out now, I'm thinking, yeah, whatever, who cares? Kha'Zix is top, this is fine. Let Camille pressure bot. Oh, for some reason they engage on this. Oh, this might be a good ult here. Good ult. Mm -hmm. I think we could have altered a little bit more in front of Cassidy in there. Oh, I guess he sort of rift walked at a weird time. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Mill jumps in, Ezreal ease onto your heads for some reason. Alright, well, or we could just let the team engage us mid and then probably take this mid inhibitor now. Kha'Zix just, looks like he's just rage splitting top. Alright, well, that was nice and simple, but again, I need you to be thinking this way about closing out games correctly. Maybe you guys can just end the game here. But, uh, okay... So Yasuo's coming up, Israel's coming up. This might be risky. Oh, Kassin's still alive. We gotta get out of here. Ooh, okay. All right, so let's just look at the way this plays out and then we'll talk about what's gonna happen here after this. All right, so this is the typical overstay. This is another, another one of my sultry sins. Part of this is like, okay, it looks like we can basically end right now, but at the end of the day, it's 23 minutes. Spawn timers are still very low. It's not like this is 47 minutes into the game or something where you guys could easily end off those kills. It's more being decisive. If you're just understanding right now, literally the moment Cassidy gets out here. So, cool, cool, cool. Miss. All right. Done. Out. Out, 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 out. We need to get ready for this Dragon Soul. So important. What's going to happen here is, again, your team, as we can see, overstays and you guys lose Dragon Soul. Again, delaying the game a lot more. Not possible. Even if you can get this tower, sure, but you can't be hitting the Nexus here with how low you guys will are. It's your, it's, I view this as my responsibility in my game to not bait my team into overstaying. Because the way you're posturing here, sure, you could back off and be like, Nathan, they don't follow, they just die anyway, and then we lose Dragon Soul anyway. But you need to, this is where you can ideally control your team. Like, hey guys, Kasten's out, backing out. The decisiveness, the speed of this decision can literally win you and lose your games. As we can see here, this probably loses you the game. So, um, yeah, again, it's like the way you, you keep going in and out, you're like, oh, I can help my team, I can help my team. It's like, you really can't. You're a 20% health Hecarim with 180 mana and no ultimate. You're very useless right now. All right, so, yep, two people died here. You're resetting. You buy their sands, which is a very good buy. Uh, next item I'd go is probably... Kassadin's pretty strong. Maybe a Spirit Visage. I think you need some Magic Resist. Yeah, looks like you are a bit of Magic Resist. And then he has a Dragon Soul. So, that's pretty big. Um, Mountain Soul would have been very nice this game. So, Kassadin keep, just keeps getting caught. Oh, he's just trying to go for just outplay potential. Does trade one for one. And you guys are going for the end again. Oh, Kassan is alive. Very difficult here. Kimilla's no wall. Kassan and Kazix is coming back up. Again, just play sides right now. Just back off. Again, just back off. Play sides. Let's stop the ARAM in. This is ARAM, and ARAM. This is EUS, isn't it? EUS to ARAM. So we're two levels ahead again. Ideally, K 
Camille should have been pressuring bot here. Right now I'm thinking I need bot to have been pressured a lot, so then I can flip the map and then I can be looking to pressure Baron, because Baron's the next objective in my eyes right now. So you want to be controlling top side now. Alright, so Kassel tries to chase you, you guys come to- I like, hey, this is good, good, two controls, coming top to control top side, getting ready for, um, Baron, so right now I'm thinking three things, river control, and the way that I'm going to get that is through pushing mid wave and pushing top wave, love this, I love taking waves as Hecarim, you're just telling your team, if you guys aren't going to push this wave, I'm just going to quickly push it. Camping, again, I love this control, baiting the enemy team. The enemy team is stressing out right now because they might be thinking you're on Baron. So this is a very good Baron bait. You're baiting Baron. And it looks like we're just going to take the Baron. The enemy team doesn't even want to walk in here. All right, playing sides now. Good. Good, good. I mean, ideally someone's pressuring mid here as well, but mid's eventually going to actually know that's inhibitor spawn back up. So, yeah, this is a bit more sticky. Yeah. In these situations, you need to be spam pinging Camille because there's a brief window right now where the enemy team can actually come and kill Camille, which is what it is right now. And Kassin's just like, I don't need to help top just yet. They need to push it. I'm going to go bot, kill, kill bot. And that suddenly relieves all pressure from the enemy team here. And then it looks like you actually feel forced. Okay, we well actually, I mean, you could actually also still win the game off this by casting and coming here. And, but then you feel forced because you're like, Kassin's bot, this is 3v4. Going on this, oh, this is such a sticky situation here. Yeah, I mean, I get I get what your mindset was here. You're like, I'm just gonna force. But again, you, no one can really follow up with you as Hecarim, you know? It's like Twisted Fake or Ope, Oriana's, you got to be careful in those sort of engages because you're our alone. How can Misfortune, Twisted Fate, Oriana catch up with you? You know, they're, they're pretty slow champs. They can't just run in and, you know, they're not really assassins. You know, TF can obviously ult, but, like, he'll be suiciding, essentially. So there goes a lot of pressure from your Baron there. That was a bit of a botch play. And everyone sort of just waits. So then, yeah, everyone just dies off this. Oh, you guys try and go for the end. Yeah, okay, I'll see how this game goes. All right. And then we're going here for mid play. Okay, this is really greedy. Look at your build right now. You have almost no magic resist. I mean, we're just going to get one shot by level 18 Cassidy, aren't we? So this is pretty suicide. Especially the fact that we're eating onto a creep like this. Alright, so yeah, I think this is where I'm going to end the review here. Um, biggest thing here is just lack of closing out the game. We made some pretty basic errors. Um, major one being um, when we came top here. Oh, the other thing as well is you broke another sin here. You had a p health potion, and again, you're not respecting Kha'Zix here at all. You can maybe survive, potentially, you know? Um, I mean, I'll be popping my potion even gone to the Krugs, because you got to get ready for Kha'Zix being here. Pop potion. Potion should have been popped. Not popping health potions when you're going to be potentially fighting, get into a risky position. So it shows right there again, you're just not respecting the Kha'Zix. Alright, uh, so let's just wrap it up with some key takeaways. My final notes for you to um, take away with from this VOD review. Alright, so quickly going back to the request here. He thought he lost the game because he couldn't finish the game quickly enough against Cassidy. Um, yep, absolutely true, but it was all on him. Um, didn't close out the game well enough, made some pretty big throws, gave Kassan a huge shutdown. Actually, probably lost a lot of momentum when he had 2,500 gold, and then went top for that risky, pointless fight, and then gave Kassan 500 gold and three, four ways worth of experience in gold. So that first Drake, I definitely don't think it was 50-50. You're clearly stronger. You had Ori with uh, Ult, and you're Hecarim against the Kha'Zix um, with Conqueror. So that was definitely, I think, fine dragon. Uh, and yeah, I agree with the win condition there. So I think overall it was played pretty well. Um, this is the final match issue of the game. As we can see, Kassadin sort of just got out of control there. Um, and we just not properly closing out the game. So these are the sins that we broke this game. Um, not popping your health potions before during a fight. That's what we talked about. I went back in the VOD um, showing you that first initial when we went top. We killed Yasuo and then we walked into the enemy jungle. Um, without respecting that the Kha'Zix had information advantage on us. These are sort of too tired. They were sort of happen at the same time. So that's 
uh, salty sin number 23 shown on the map and then walking into a jungle when enemy mid jungle is missing and what well, I could also say here and you knew where Karzix was because you pinged that he started it um, that was that huge throw sitting on the map for 1500 gold in your inventory and taking a risky fighter objective that's when we did that huge throw against Kassadin again we ideally should have reset after those wolves spend all our gold then come top pressure top get that second rift herald and then that last bit there when you weren't decisive enough on um, that end when you guys thought you could end at 23 minutes. The overstay, losing tempo, which lost you that dragon soul. So these were the sins that you broke. Um, the sins that you made in that game. So key takeaways there. I think you should have taken red smite versus Kha'Zix Yasuo since you identified top as your win condition instead of the blue smite. No need to use pots when smiting Grom. Again, you were probably 100 and 50 HP ineffective that game. Use smart for red buff. Not respecting when enemy has an information advantage over you. That was the first death to Kha'Zix there. Again, going back to the Soul 2 sin. I want to keep bringing that up because it's a really important mistake I see so many times people make. I'd say overall you had a very good understanding of efficient jungle path and you're two levels ahead of Kha'Zix most of that game and really good counter jungling, really good punishing. Need to be patient with Hecarim's R against Chance with jumps. You know, that ult at 9 minutes 30 seconds. Kha'Zix just jumped over the wall. But again, I didn't even want you to use your ult in that situation. View it as a small win. He's out. Bait the Rift Held. Kill three people because people hate losing objectives in solo queue, even in Diamond. And then, um, you know, accelerate the game from there. Good understanding of win condition and breaking top tail Rift Held. That was an excellent dive break top when you saw Kha'Zix spot. That was very clean, well played. Uh, it was good skipping your Krugs for tempo for that dragon setup. Again, you were efficient, but you weren't overly efficient. You understood when there was moments to be a fit to farm and when to, to pressure the map. And that was your second dragon, I think. Yeah, it was at 11.15, so that was really good. Taking not a necessary fight at 15.40. That was, again, the Soul 2 Sin that we just went over that you that you um, that you um broke. And I mean, there was also just a pathing problem as well. Again, you should have just based off the walls. That would have been all problem solved, so... Um, completely unnecessary fight, lost all momentum. That was a huge game losing mistake. Love the focus on mid pride with your Baron when you just rocketed straight mid, but we needed to be more patient playing around Camille there. That sort of looked like it worked out, but it's sort of by coincidence because the enemy team just engaged on us and sort of threw. Use Herald in side lane. Ideally with Camille in that situation, you want to reset and then use a bot. Always better once enemy mid tower one, tier one is gone. Really important, utilizing it mid. It's not about the objectives of second rift tower. Again, think of it as utilizing it to kill players. Putting them in unfavorable positions in their um, jungle, get them, catch them rotating as they're coming down to you know defend the rift herald. Risking an overstay, indecisive if can end game or not, not identifying that well enough, lost drag soul because of it. And then, yeah, just overall not methodical in closing out the game with two Barons. Aram versus just using side lanes. Waiting for your Camille to get pressure. You know, just patience. You got Baron, slowly um, control that side of the map. I mean, wait for the enemy team, your laner to push, control, push, control, push, control. Sometimes it takes three or four times, but eventually the enemy team will slip up and make a mistake. All right, so this was, I think, a really good review. Um, let me know if you have any comments, questions below. Overall played pretty well, but these tiny little things he's going to, if he fixes these things, this is what helps get a player from Diamond 3 to, you know, Master Tier Plus. These tiny little decision making, really, really important. Again, he has great understanding of the, the jungling, I think. But um, again, there was definitely a very big lack of champion mastery, the way he was using his E and his alt. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in my next video.